this one. When you speak from that, it is close. It's a better sound there when you in front of that. Sorry, it's how much work you ah, okay. ah, but now it's uh But why do you have seven chats and I only have one? Sorry, I only have one. I don't have any chat here. Seven. Uh, when, you when, you the, when you click on it, to read it, the notification is up here. So that's why you have no computer Ah, the old messages are deleted. No, they are not deleted, but just the, 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 the number in red is up here. Yeah, but I only have one message. Ah, Good morning. I only have when one. you click share screen, so you're sharing your presentation. So we can't see any other window that's open in your computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, what I'm claiming is that I don't see the, the chat. Well, anyway, if somebody, um, I only have one message. Yes, yes, I see. And there should be at least seven. Right. Well, anyway, if somebody wants to ask something, please use the microphone or use the chat, but somebody wants to look at the chat. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we want to see, we want to uh, find the minimal work to change a memory from a state to another state. So, um, okay. Okay. And um, so, uh, it, we we have a powerful tool, which is this one: the non-equilibrium free energy. Remember that the non-equilibrium free energy is the average energy of the memory minus t, the entropy of the memory, the share of entropy. Of the memory. So, we are going to apply this. And this is the minimal work to go from M to M prime. And M is a random, is, is, is the random the probabilistic state of the memory, and M prime is the final probabilistic state of the memory. Yesterday I said that I will I wouldn't do the proof of this, but I want to do the proof just to, to uh, because there is a conceptual issue that tells you uh, why a memory is what. What are the requirements for a memory? This is non-equilibrium. This is to connect two non-equilibrium states. We will see why why uh, why a memory is in non-equilibrium. But you can imagine in the in the a memory is something that can be in two states. So the equilibrium, if the two states are have the same energy, the equilibrium would be to be one half one half. But our purpose is to the purpose of a memory is to be either in zero in one. Is this one? Yes. <laughs> this is interfering? You change the slide. <laughs> 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 I don't think it's this one. I think it's the internet that. Uh... Yeah. No, the problem is that I get kicked out of. of yes. Uh, of you stopped sharing screen for some reason. No, 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 it, it goes out of the zoom. 
Uh -huh. I, I, I get okay. out of the, of the meeting. Okay. okay. I don't know why. Okay, so um, the, so the I, I would, today I would like to do this proof at least in a very, uh, not, not rigorous way, but uh, to see one of the problems of this. This is not equilibrium, eh? it states. So uh, one would think if you, if you have a system out of equilibrium, uh, the system immediately tries, tries to relax to equilibrium. So one can, one can say, uh, is this true? This is the minimal work, or I can, I, I have to do very fast the transformation. Let me let me show you how how this formula how this formula works. You no, know? remember this is the free energy, the non equilibrium free energy. Suppose that I I I start in one state. Mm -hmm. This is my system. The blue curve represents the state, the probabilistic state, and the black curve is the potential. So you remember that in equilibrium, the the and rho, rho is the the probability density, and h is the potential of Hamiltonian. Is the Hamiltonian? You know that um, if a system is in equilibrium, if rho is exponential of minus, it's not here. If, if rho is the, let me have this. So, this is the definition of equilibrium in a statistical mechanics. No, this uh, a temperature T. This is a normalization constant, and beta is the inverse of the temperature. So if I have a potential like that, the, the equilibrium distribution is like the blue curve. So, um, suppose that you are in a non equilibrium system, a non equilibrium state. So, this is the potential, no? And uh, in this potential, the equilibrium state is that the particle is the probability is this one here. So, the probability is higher in the minima, in this case, in the minimum of the potential. So, this is the equilibrium state. And this is not equilibrium. In this diagram, uh, here is non equilibrium and here is equilibrium. So if you just uh, let the system relax, the system will start to. Here the system could be a, a bunch of particles or a single particle, and, and you repeat the experiment and, and you plot the histogram, and this is the histogram of the, of the system. So um, you can think of uh, the two possibilities. So uh, you start in non equilibrium state. And then the system relaxes. In a, relax, a relaxation is an irreversible process. So you dissipate heat. And well, you not necessarily dissipate heat, but the entropy of the universe increases. Uh, so it's, it's irreversible. So you cannot, you cannot invert. If you want to go from here to here, you have to, to do work. Because uh, from here to here is OK. 
Okay. And here, from here to here, you don't do any work, but you don't extract work. You don't do, you don't do anything. It just, it's only, there is only heat and entropy production. Okay. And now think of this transformation, you, or, of this transformation uh, doing the following protocol. Now you manipulate the potential and you do the following. Immediately, instantaneously, you change your potential to this value. Look that this is the inverse of this. So if I if I manage to, to, uh, to create this potential, the system is immediately in equilibrium. So I do this and now quasi statically, I go from here to here. If I do this, the entropy production is zero. And the work done to do this is precisely the difference of free energies. And this is the minimal work. So this is the optimal process, this one. If I want to do the minimal work or extract the maximal work. And, um, and this is the process that uh, achieves, remember this important inequality, This is minimal, so it is it's, the work is, is always bigger than this. The minimal work is achieved when I have this protocol. This protocol is not, not always possible, yeah, this protocol, but if it is possible, I can extract the maximum amount of energy. And I connect a non-equilibrium state with an equilibrium state. This is important because when you have non-equilibrium, you have non-equilibrium, uh, it seems that you can, that there is an unavoidable entropy production. Here is not the case, but why? Well, you can say, well, but this is a cheap trick. It's just, okay, you start in non-equilibrium, but immediately you go to an, an equilibrium state. So you start here, but immediately at time t equal zero, you go to equilibrium and now you apply, um, you apply equilibrium to avoid that, which is that. So uh, this tells you, okay, uh, you are cheating because um, you cannot apply this formula to non-equilibrium because uh, what you are doing is to, to tune everything to turn the system in equilibrium immediately. And this is true. Uh, this is true for this uh, naive uh, picture. And, and you can say, well, for instance, if, if, if instead of, of doing this immediately at time t equals zero, you wait a little bit, there will be a relaxation. So it seems that this is impossible to achieve unless you immediately go to equilibrium. And you would say, ah, so I, I, I claim that this is very useful for non-equilibrium states, but you can say, well, it's non-equilibrium, but it's a, a fake. Well, you are partly right, this is true. But uh, there is a case when this is useful, even if you don't instantaneously change to uh, equilibrium. And it's precisely in memories. It's precisely, and, and this occurs when there are a huge separation of time scales. Suppose that the relaxation occurs in a time scale which is very large centuries or the age of the universe. Then this relaxation would never occur. Suppose that this relaxation occurs in, in a scale of centuries. Then you can do this process. You need to be very fast. You can do that. And this is the idea. The idea is that, uh, uh, and this happens in a memory. In a memory, if you think of a memory or at least the typical memories, um, there are huge separation of time scales. And this is what I'm going to tell you now. But remember that with a huge separation of time scales, this formula that the work is the difference of free energy can be applied even without the need of such a artificial photo. Okay. So now let me go to uh, information devices or inform information devices. So uh, what is a uh, memory? OK, 
Okay. What is a memory? Okay, uh, the, the memory is something, it's a physical system that can adopt different states. In the case of a bit, it's very easy. It can adopt two states. And the states are somehow equivalent. And in DNA is the same. What is, uh, DNA can, each basis can adopt four, uh, four uh, possibilities, no? That the machinery of the the machinery of the DNA is works with any of the four, so they are equivalent somehow. And in a computer, uh, uh, each bit can be zero one, but they are somehow equivalent okay? in the sense that they can be manipulated equivalent. And the second property, so they must be equivalent. And the second property is that they must um, have a long lifetime. In DNA, it's very rigid. You cannot, uh, mutations are rare. And in the computer, we don't want that the, that the bits are flipping in, in a short time. We, we need a very long uh, lifetime. Okay? And here you see the separation of time scale. The typical, the typical model is a two-well potential. This, is, this could be the register of a memory storing one bit. One bit of information here, okay? And you see that, okay, uh, let me finish. Uh, uh, the system can be here or here. And if this barrier is much larger than KT, you know that the jumps are very rare. The, the, the typical time to jump is exponential of the energy divided by KT. This can be uh, 10 to 20 years. So you say that then memory system has a very long lifetime. That means like you can uh, be in the same state for a long time. Yeah. You can like save the data for a long, long time. Yeah. These are passive memory. Uh, remember that CPUs are physically active memories too. The zero one is in the, in the current. But in, in, this is passive memories and the passive memory is like that. This could be, this could be the magnetization. I'm not an expert in, in Technology, computer technology, but this can be uh, magnetization or uh, whatever. It could be for DNA as well. This could be uh, for DNA. You have four uh, wells, okay? But this is one bit, and this must be uh, very big. I mean, much bigger than KT. It's enough to be maybe twenty-two times KT, and. Uh, and then the time to go from here to here is an exponential of 20 uh, times some kind of what depends on the, yeah, there's another quantity, kind of paper factor with units of time. But it's in any case, you can make this very, very large. If you have a computer, if you have a hard drive, and you have to wait years to corrupt the information story. Well, sometimes you don't have to. <laughs> to wait. It depends on the temperature as well. The last time. Yes. Said, Sorry, do we have to put in the work in order to transition from one uh, state uh, to another? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, okay, this is just the memory. Okay, okay. And we start here, but of course, to to rewrite, to overwrite the memory, yes. you need to have work. You need to do something like that, for instance, or even to bias one of the. This type of systems eventually it will it will equilibrate it will it will reach equilibrium. If you wait centuries, the the the, the system here there are two time scales. One is the time scale within the well, mm -hmm. and the other time scale is this one. In a memory, there is a huge separation between the two, separation of orders of magnitude. If you wait long enough. Then the system will reach equilibrium. What is equilibrium in this case? In this case, equilibrium is that the probability be here is one half and here is one half, something like that. But of course, if if, the, if it is a memory, you can manipulate this. For instance, you can bias this a little bit, not so much. So still, the the particle remains here and here. 
So if you are in this state and you bias the two wells, mm -hmm. the particles don't jump. They don't, they cannot jump. So the state remains one half, one half. But now the equilibrium, if you compute this state, this is not one half, one half. The equilibrium probabilities are, uh, here is in equilibrium, if you wait centuries, the particle will be more likely here than here. So here you see, what is the memory first? The memory is something that has these two, these two equivalent states and, uh, and they have a long lifetime. And second, and more importantly, that in fact, when you manipulate the memory, you are driving the system out of equilibrium. Sometimes you want, for instance, if I write a zero, and maybe I come here, I come from heat, from, from this state, and, and, and this one half, one half, but I can do whatever I like, and, and I hear the system is out of equilibrium. I can even force the system to be here, or I can measure and, and find the system here, and then my probability density will be uh, located <laughs> in this well, and then this is also out of equilibrium. So uh, here, uh, in a memory, this is a generic memory with many states, uh, each state is populated with some probability. And this probability can be out of equilibrium. Here, the probability, the equilibrium probability is one half. And uh, here, sorry, here the, the equilibrium probability is higher in the right than in the left. And still, the state is this one. So this is a, 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 a particular non-equilibrium. It's a particular system, a system with this separation of long of, of time scales. And this, a particular case of non-equilibrium states. Non-equilibrium, we think of non-equilibrium as something that relaxes to equilibrium. These, these systems are out of equilibrium, but they cannot relax. I mean, they can't, they you have to wait centuries to see the relaxation. So the relaxation is so slow that you can consider that the state is constant. And in these cases, the formula, this formula, that the work is uh, always bigger than delta F, the one that we applied yesterday, this works even for non-equilibrium states. So uh, uh, we have seen what is a memory and that this formula is actually achieved, this, the quality is achievable in most cases. Actually, in the non equilibrium, uh, the equilibrium, when you have like the non symmetric uh, potential, you have said that the equilibrium is fixed at a long time also, no a long time limit. I mean, uh, you spend a lot of time to achieve equilibrium, yeah. also in the non symmetric uh, potential. Yeah. So, you are saying like, for example, if the particle is trapped in the left side of the potential, it will remain in this side, no, and not changing to the other. No, eventually, if you wait for centuries, it will start to change. Uh -huh. yes. start but to with different it. rates, because it's not and different rates, and, uh, and, uh, and it will equilibrate. Okay. With, it will equilibrate with a ratio of probabilities depending on the heights of the potential, maybe. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For instance, here, the equilibrium, this is not equilibrium. Why? Because the equilibrium is higher here than here. Mm -hmm. This is the, the state and this is the potential. Yeah, it's not equilibrium. This is not equilibrium. Yeah. Actually, equilibrium, equilibrium is only when this, this equation is, is, is okay. But the, the, what you have in, in a memory is always non-equilibrium because equilibrium is not interesting. You want to store some information and this information is, in most of the cases, these keys are zero, one. Because you have a, a well-defined, uh, well-defined um, uh, state of the memory. Here, we are considering. You see, in computer science, you you only look at the deterministic calculation. Of the deterministic. So your memory is a fixed state, and you, but here we we can include uh, random transformations. Okay, so I'm 
the last you said. You don't equilibrium you, it's not interesting to store information because it runs to from one yeah. place to another. Yeah. Okay, one can prove using the non equilibrium free energy that the, the non equilibrium free energy is related with the Shannon entropy of the memory. So um, in this, uh, to prove this formula, we assume that the system, you remember that there is a, there is a huge time scale separation. There is the, 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 the time scale of the relaxation within one of these regions. Uh, these are the regions of the two wells, but now this is an example with four regions. So there is a, a time scale which is fast, it's very fast within each region. And there is a super slow time scale, which is the jumps between regions. These are the information states. These are my bits, and uh, it's very unlikely to jump, but it's very easy to, uh, I mean, it's very fast here. So we can assume, and this is a good assumption, that the system is in equilibrium locally, but out of equilibrium between regions. And this is the peculiar non-equilibrium states. They are locally in equilibrium, but out of equilibrium, if you consider the probabilities to be here and there. And in this case, the non-equilibrium free energy is this. I don't want to give you, this is a, you can prove this. Those of you who are, who know very well statistical mechanics, you can prove this formula. This is not difficult. You just, uh, you have to, Use the definition. The definition of free energy is this one. This is the Hamiltonian minus T, the, the entropy, the Shannon entropy of the state, and this is the Hamiltonian. In this case. The state is non-equilibrium. If this is if this is equilibrium, this is KT log Z as, as in statistical mechanics. But you can prove this formula, which is not a uh, and this is a property of each state, eh? of each of these regions. If the, if the memory is symmetric, if the memory is symmetric, in fact, the, uh, uh, the, the only important uh, 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 term here is the entropy, and we can get this formula, which is that the, the minimal work to go from n prime to n uh, sorry, to, from go to from M to M prime is the difference of entropy in the in the memory in the memory, and this is this was expected, but there is all this uh, treatment to, to do it, and and this work can be achieved in memories because this separation of time scale. This is the problem. And now you can apply this, for instance. Let's do it the, the second one. Suppose you have a memory which can be in any state, it's completely random. So it has a lot of entropy, Shannon entropy. Okay? So this is your starting, uh, this is from M, this is to go from M to M prime. So you have a lot of, uh, you have a lot of entropy and you want to overwrite and write everything zero, 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 zero which has zero entropy, so this is zero. So the work to do this operation, to go from a completely random memory to a zero, 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 zero memory is just is the entropy of this. This is Landauer's principle. You remember Landauer was uh, that, the Landauer principle told, tells you that to erase a, a bit, but remember what is erased a bit, is to overwrite a bit, so you have a bit which is zero one. Remember the you can you 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 are in zero one with probability one half, and then in in the restore to zero you erase a bit by forcing the system to to go to zero. So this is this has an entropy log two, and this has an entropy zero. So this is log two and this is zero. So the minimal work is k. Sorry, I have to go to the. There is a t here. 
Ah, okay. That's a KT. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it depends on the unit, but it's, 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 there is at least a temperature difference. Okay. And sorry, and in the first, in, in that formula, in the box, what was FN? Sorry. Uh, FN, I, I didn't explain in detail because I want you just, uh, okay. okay. If you want to see the details of this, Uh, we assume that uh, the system is locally in equilibrium. So you can define a partition function for each state, mm -hmm. and then Fm is just a free energy associated to this state. Okay. Okay. So, because I, I know that not everybody is familiar with particular mechanics, I skip these uh, details. Uh, what I want to show you is that Landauer's principle follows. Remember that yesterday I had this historical introduction. So uh, we presented the, uh, the, steel, the Maxwell Demon, the Cigar Engine, the Landauer principle, and the Bennett solution. So what we are trying to do uh, yesterday, we saw the Cigar Engine uh, with ferros and so on, which uses uh, mutual information. Today we are looking. At, for instance, and our principle and the best solution by using uh, um, uh, mutual information, which will appear now. Uh, there is a. I will try information. No, is it like those, those people? Ah, no, that's, that's <laughs> your. <laughs> okay. Um, you can have the other way around. And this is interesting. You can have a memory with all, all zeros. This is very low entropy. So this is zero, and you can disorder the memory. So you will have this is positive, and the work is minus this, which means that I extract work. So I can go if I have a very uh, a very older memory, all zeros, and uh, I disorder it, I can extract work. There is a very interesting paper by Jarsinski and Mandel, no, that um. It's in the in the paper that I gave you. This is the, the citation. It's uh they have a tape because the memory could be. You think when you write, this is a memory as well. <laughs> you write right. in any sheet of paper. So you have a tape with zeros and ones. It's zero can be magnetic or can be whatever. And the tape, it's zero, it's all zeros, zeros, zeros. And there is a machine which actually is like a chemical machine. It's, um, it's a kinetic model, like the ones that uh, Barato showed. I don't know if in this school you will have Markov chains, something like that. Markov chains are given. OK, it's a very simple kinetic, kinetic model. Kinetic means that it's like reactions, like uh, A goes to B, B goes to C, and so it's a Markov chain. So it is the, 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 the machine is fed by a tape with 0, 0, 0, 0. The machine disorders. The tape and extract work and to work. This is an information machine. So you can have the two. Now, now the, the Landauer's principle is more general and, and it can go in the, the two directions. So you can go if you order, if you order a disorder memory, you have to dissipate it. But if you do the other way around, if you go from the tape with zeros or a, a bit with the with zero and you disorder it. You can extract work from it. These are called information reservoirs, and there is a lot of literature on this. And it's information as a fuel as well. Information is a fuel. Essentially, because information, well, by information, we, we mean something with low entropy. Something with low entropy is a fuel. Like the CRNG, for example, it uses information to extract work. Well, this is different. This is a, this is a feedback. We will go back and start to do that. It's different. In the CRN, you have a physical system, you measure and you give this information. In the, in the although, although can be interpreted as an information uh, system. Uh, here in the information reservoirs, you have a memory. Only a memory and the which is like order, it. and then you disorder it and extract it. Well, you extract it for the thermal part. 
بعد این سال دیگه And everything is, is encoded in this free energy. Okay? So the free energy is important. So the information uh, as a few, so you know, can be, for example, uh, some correlations. Uh, yeah, can be also correct. Although it's harder to, for instance, uh, just this, this model is, it uses just the fact that it is low entropy Fermi. It doesn't use correlation. Uh, Actually, this is, the, this is the kind of weak point of the paper of the paper that they don't see for it. But you can have something uh, which is, you can have a chain with probability of being zero equal zero. I mean, probability of each bit equal one half, which, which is a disordered chain. Uh, in principle, if you look, this is another thing that when you compute Shannon, if you don't look at correlation, suppose that you have a tape which is a suppose that you have a tape which is zero one zero one zero one etc. And you just uh, of course it's not disorder, but if you look only at the frequency of zeros and ones, you get that the probability to be zero, the probability to be one is uh, is one half. So you, you will see the entropy is uh, is scale of two, mm -hmm. but it is not. It is, uh, actually, the entropy is zero. Well, maybe it's scale of because of the first thing, but um, the entropy of the whole chain. So this is the entropy per bit. No, if you are naive and and, and uh, this is, but the entropy per, per bit is, is almost zero. Okay, so now uh, we can address the problem of, uh, of uh, looking at the physical nature of the demon, because the demon is a memory. So we needed this, uh, this um, analysis of memories to incorporate the physical nature of the demon. So now uh, I'm going to, um, this is essentially Bennett's solution of the, of the, of the, Maxwell, of the Maxwell demon of the Steeler engine. And the idea is to consider the Steeler engine and the demon as, as physical systems. And the demon measures you know, the position. Remember, the, we have the Steeler engine and the demon measures the Steeler engine. So uh, the first problem is if, if, if we need some work to measure the quantum. So we need a model of measurement. These are classical measurements, no quantum measurements. So there is no random, well, there is some randomness, but there is no, uh, there is no collapse of the wave function or things like that. It's a classical method. But still, we need a model of a classical method. We, we, this model, we call it the ideal classical measurement. And we have a system which we want to measure with some states X and, uh, and the observer. The observer will be a memory and it has the states M. And uh, of course, uh, what is the measurement? The measurement is that M uh, becomes correlated with the state of the system. So, so think of uh, the Cilar engine. This would be the Cilar engine. X is left, right. And this will be the demo. So M will be left, right. And after the measurement, they become uh, uh, correlated. Actually, if the if the measurement is error free, x will be equal to m prime. Well, I put m prime because the, the m changes in the measurement. Initially, it can be whatever, and here it's correlated. <laughs> and think of that this is what you, the exercise you did yesterday. If the measurement is error free, then uh, m prime would be equal to x. If it has an error, but m prime would be equal to x with the probability one minus epsilon, or it will be the opposite with the probability epsilon, whatever, whatever model you can <coughs> see here. And of course, this can be more complicated than the Cilar engine. This can be, uh, this, the, this is the outcome of the measurement. We will assume that it's discrete because it's easier, but uh, it can be even continued. So you can have uh, a pointer, uh, a measurement device, and M can be anything. We will assume also uh, that initially, 
the two are uncoupled. So well, this is a, a typical assumption that uh, they are uh, uncorrelated and uncoupled. So there is no any interaction between the two. And uh, after the measurement, they become correlated. correlated. But uh, this is the idea of a classical measurement. The system uh, does not, is not uh, affected by the measurement. This is impossible in quantum mechanics, but in classical mechanics, we can assume that the system is not affected. And we will assume also that after the measurement, M and X are correlated but they, uh, they are uncoupled in this physical sense. I mean, they, they, they don't have an interaction in it. Of course, to correlate two systems, you need to switch on some uh, interaction. Yeah? Remember that we are, we are trying to do a physical analysis of this, so there will be a Hamiltonian, and this means that the Hamiltonian, before and after the measurement, the Hamiltonian, is, uh, there is no interaction in turn between the two systems, and in the middle, there will be some interaction. Okay, if you have this, um, this uh, 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 assumption, uh, mx uh, represents the state of system and observer before the measurement, so the probability, the joint probability is factorized because they are uncorrelated, and after the measurement, I would have uh, a correlation, but p, but x would be remain the same. So the form of, of the probability after the measurement is like that. x is the same as here, it didn't change, and m changes according to the conditional probability. If this is error free, this conditional probability will be a delta function. If it is has some error, it would be uh, like the one you, you, you saw yesterday. For instance, if if, there is, if this is L R uh, left right, it will be left left will be one minus epsilon and right left epsilon exactly what we did yesterday. So yesterday the, the difference is that yesterday M was just the outcome of the, of the measurement. You didn't look at the physical nature of the observer, and now it's a physical system. So there will be a Hamiltonian, and there will be um, there will be a Hamiltonian for uh, the system and for the observer, and there will be a shadow range. Remember the non equilibrium free energy is this one here. And now, before the, the measurement, everything, the, the, the shadow range of is additive when the two particles are independent, then the two systems are independent. The Hamiltonian is also uh, the sum of M, the Hamiltonian of the observer plus the Hamiltonian of the system because they're uncoupled. So everything is additive and the free energy is additive. So before the measurement, we have this uh, condition. And after the measurement, this is the interesting part, the, they are the couple. So the Hamiltonian also is the sum of the system plus the observer. It doesn't matter if, if they are correlated or not because the energy, I have the energy of the system, the energy of the, of the MS. But they are correlated. So the shadow entropy now is not added. So how can we convert the shadow entropy of two systems? Uh, how can we relate this with the individual entropies of each system? Using the other uh, expression for the, for the uh, this is amazing that the mutual information, you remember that there are two, two ways of, there are, there are three, but here it's right. So we, we uh, yesterday we analyzed a lot this, this uh, well, it was M yesterday because there was no need of, of separating before and after. Now it's, now I use M prime. But yesterday you used this one, you remember? So, well, we no, we use this to calculate, but we use actually we use this one. Yes. How the uncertainty of my system reduces when I measure, 
Now we are using this one. Which is how the correlation uh, reduces the entropy of the of the well. If you like, how the entropy of the well, we can we can uh, so we can do we can. This is this is the reduction of uncertainty if I measure, and this is a different thing. This is a measure of the correlation. This is the the entropy, the uncertainty of the X and M considered independent. And this is the uncertainty if you consider the correlation. Or in other uh, terms, uh, the, the, the entropy, the entropy of the two is equal to the entropy of each one separately minus the mutual information. Well, I can I can take this formula and uh, see there is H with this uh, Hamiltonian is the free energy the other free energy plus it. So this is it, very nice. This is the um, the mutual information tells you the contribution of co correlations to the free energy of the whole thing. And appears so uh, it appeared yesterday appeared as the reduction of uncertainty now appears as as the as the as the 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 contribution of correlations to the free energy. Now, if you subtract before and after, the the free energy of the system cancels, and the work to measure. Sorry, I will shut up. Okay, this is the, the minimal work to measure is the increment, this difference. I don't speak too much. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is the in, the different the, the increment of energy in the in the apparatus, <laughs> because this is uh, inevitable. Plus, and this is the interesting term, plus the neutral information. So it appears in a very different way. And, uh, and um, of course, this is what we are going to compensate afterwards. You see, before we can extract a work ATI, and now I have to uh, put a work ATI. And this is, a, this is the solution of the, of the Maxwell theorem. Here you have the whole thing. We can have uh, the Silar engine is a, is, a, is a particular case of what we call feedback motor. In the feedback motor, you have you have some physical system, and you have an observer, and the observer measures something, and manipulates the system according to this measurement, and we call this feedback. The feedback. This is in engineering. Feedback means that uh, you act on the system according to a measurement. So uh, this is a feedback. So uh, what is the uh, the non-equilibrium free energy? Uh, in in the at the beginning. Hamiltonian, they are no interaction, they are correlated, so the free energy study is the free energy of the whole system. After the measurement, the correlation appears here. Of course, the, 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 the memory, the observer, the demon changes its, its state, can change its state, and, and it appears here. What is the minimal work? The minimal work to do this operation is the difference. This cancels, and I get uh, the difference of free energy in the measurement device or in the observer plus KT. You see that here I is always positive. So here uh, to create correlations to measure, you need to do some work. Now you have the feedback. And the feedback is what we studied yesterday. The feedback essentially is to, to, to erase, to, to destroy uh, correlations. And we know from yesterday that we, we can take out from the bath this amount of work in the feedback. And finally, and this was Bennett also uh, idea to complete a cycle. You see that here uh, in the feedback, 
the memory of the demo this doesn't change because the, the demo still remembers the outcome of the, of the measurement, but now he has to uh, forget. And there is this Landauer eraser here. And then the demo must go back to its initial state, which is this one. And if you compute the minimal work to do this operation, this is minus delta n. Okay, so this is the minimal work to complete all the steps in the CLR engine. And now you see, yesterday we only had this part because we didn't care about the cost of the, of the month's operation. Now we have the cost, the cost. There is a cost of measurement, there is a cost of operation. And if you sum the three, this cancels with this, this cancels with this, and the minimal work is zero. The minimal work is zero. Or if you like the cost, this is what you, ATI is what you extract. But to complete the whole thing, you have to spend a work on measurement and a work of duration. Uh, when you are talking about a feedback work, you are referring to a remote correlation, right? Yeah, this is a this is an oh, uh, let's say a byproduct. Yesterday we got the second law. No, we got that we can extract magnetic KTI. Now we see that to extract KTI, to extract KTI, you have to remove correlation. And in fact, this is what happens <coughs> in the CLR engine. When, when you uh, when you do the feedback, which is uh, moving the piston, extracting, and putting back again, uh, you are uh, essentially uh, removing correlation between the demo and the system. Now, this analysis allows you to. This analysis also tells you something about the feedback, which is this: that uh, you you, and this is an interesting thing that I realized like months ago. So and. That to um, yesterday we saw uh, how you how you uh, uh, achieve the maximum extracted work by doing this reversible uh, protocol and so on. But here there is another condition to extract the maximum amount of work. You have to remove all the correlations between the demo and the, and the system. According to the scale, there is a breaking. Yeah, I, I want to tell us what you do. Uh, the only thing that I want to say is that um, uh, in, in some books, uh, Mr. Interpret uh, Bennett's solution, and they, they say, no, the cost is in the erasure, and, uh, and there is no cost of measurement. This is not true. The cost is distributed among the two. Here, uh, you see that there is this delta F. So you can tune, depending on the type of memory you use, you can, you can tune this as you like. So you can, for instance, you can make this zero by making delta F equal to KTI, and then it will appear here. Uh, here, if you make delta F equal minus KTI, this is zero, and this is KTI. And this is a, a Bennett, shows an example of that. So there is a zero measurement work and there is a KT log two in the CLR engine, KT log two work, which is the Dower's principle. And you can have different, you can have here zero and here, sorry, you can have this zero and here a lot of, here all the work here. So in the two steps, measurement and erase, you, you can have all type of combinations depending on the on the specific realization of the of the memory. And this is what it is in this formula here. And with that we will finish and um, and uh, continue. Just let's check the yes, chat. No yes, there are two uh, uh, messages. There are two questions? Yes. Okay, good morning from Abuya. Nigeria, everyone, sorry I came late today. That's no problem. Okay. Uh, 
Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. Hello. Thank you for greeting us all. Okay. <laughs> Join us for a coffee break. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Ah, now I see the chat. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, order. Sorry. Where is order memory? Here, order disorder means uh, low entropy. High entropy. So here, uh, if, if you look at the CLR engine in this way, you are using an information fuel, and it's for this is. The memory of the demon is an information reservoir, and by 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 disordering this reservoir, you are uh, you are extracting water. So this is the, this is uh, equivalent to Karczynski's uh, model of, of the demon using information reservoir. So you, you see, you can look at the at the CLR engine once you, once you have the whole picture, you can. Look at it as completing the cycle by erasing, no? By by turning all these ones to zero, and then and then you have to spend eighty log two per bit, and then you lose the, what you want in the feedback, or just by letting this by uh, creating a memory, dissolving a memory. But for, for that, you needed the, the, the memory uh, in this state. So if you like the entropy of the universe, you are, you are saying that you are uh, increasing the entropy of the memory uh, and use this increase uh, for extracting it from the head. So once you see this, it's, it's like the silar engine is not so exciting, it's more boring. It's like you, entropy is constant in the universe. So. You go, you, you disorder some, you, you extract work here, here you extract uh, heat, no? Or oh, well, you extract work, we, we, since it's a cycle, uh, this, is, this is work. And the work comes from the heat. So, so the, the entropy of the, of the bath decreases, uh, but it's compensated but by an increase in the memory. But of course, this is not a cycle. This is the problem. This is not a cycle. You cannot, you cannot feed. You, you need to feed the machine with uh, with an order. So, um, uh, so this is to ask, answer Richen, who says, "Can measurement be regarded as kind of information eraser?" Uh, it. This is a kind. It's more than, well, this is more than an information eraser. This is a creation of information because you, here there are no information. Everything is zero, there are no, here there is a lot of information, which is the information of the different states that the CLR engine has adopted in the, in the, in the cycles. So uh, for me, measurement is, measurement is the correlation between two systems. This is essentially. And there is another question, when a measurement is done, the right distribution, of the observable will become narrower. Yeah, this is what we saw yesterday. And an information erasing machine is turning. Ah, it's also narrow in the distribution. Uh, no, but uh, you are not right, uh, Richen. Um, the sequence, the disorder sequence contains more information than this one. This is also a philosophical problem of information theory, that the information, we think of information uh, and we think of meaning of a semiotic, of, a, of the meaning of a message. But in information theory, this, this was why information theory is so su successful because uh, Shannon uh, gave up, I mean, Shannon uh, removed all uh, semiotic or all uh, reference to the meaning of messages. He only care about the statistics uh, of the of properties of messages. So this, although it's random, this contains more information or it could contain more information than this one. This doesn't contain any information because once you know, I mean, once you know that you can, uh, if you like, you can think of, of uh, compression uh, of information in, in, in computer science. You can compress this, 
If this is a 100 zeros, you can just uh, say, well, this is 100 zeros. <laughs> and this is a, and, and everybody can reproduce this. And, and it's only two words, 100 zeros, no, 100 zeros, three words. But to, to describe this, you cannot, if it is really random, you cannot describe this. You have to say this is zero, one, one, zero. So this has more information than two. Okay, for the last uh, part, well, I find that I want, I want to do two things. One is um, uh, to explain the main ideas, how this can be implemented in, how can this be useful for biology and chemistry and like that. But before, because I think now is the, the time to, to, to discuss this, this question. Uh, I want to uh, uh, talk a bit about a more philosophical issue, which is what is information uh, in physics or in general, what is information. And, um, and uh, I, I have this question because, well, what I told you is you have this review paper that I uh, sent it to you, but it is also based on a review that we wrote with uh, Jordan Horowitz and, and Takahiro Sarawa. Takahiro is one of the uh, persons, the guys who really restarted on this business of uh, the modern of information. And Jordan and I have done a lot of contributions. So, so the three of us are, are like experts in the field. But uh, it was it was uh, interesting that when we were writing the the, the review, uh, <laughs> I can have experience on that. There were a lot of discrepancies on fundamental issues. Of course, in the mathematics, and everything, everything agrees with the mathematics. But when you started to think about the, the, the fundamental questions, like what is information, uh, we were especially in the conclusions. We were like fighting. Uh, <laughs> so we had two. Two very different ways. Uh, they are, I think they are complementary. So they are not. Uh, but for them, for Takahiro and, and, and Jordan, well, this was uh, this was like a revelation. This is key. And, and in this scheme, in this scheme, you see all, uh, everything that I told you before of the long long life uh, states and so on. It's not so necessary here. Actually, I will show you that you can do this even with continuous time in a moment. So um, uh, for them, the, they, they, uh, it was the revelation that the, the mutual information is, is a measurement of correlations and that it appears as a, as a, as a term, as a contribution to the free energy. So for them, the key point of uh, information is correlation. And correlations measure, uh, you can measure correlations with a correlation function, but uh, the mutual information is a nice way of measuring correlation because, because it appears in the free energy. So the free energy, uh, the, the, the contribution of correlations to the free energy is the mutual information. So for them, information is just correlations that are created and are destroyed in the system, in systems, in, in bipartite systems or in systems that are uh, composed by two. And uh, I uh, and this that that's the end of the story. So correlation and creation and annihilation of correlation. And uh, I I was uh, uh, <coughs> I, I my idea of information is that this is not enough. This is not enough. You need also the large separation of time scales that we described. So since this is my view, and this morning I I bombard you with. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, okay, so um, I think probably they are uh, the two things are for me. If you don't have if you don't have large separation of time scales, it doesn't make sense to talk about information. But I'm not so sure. So I but, but for uh, Jordan and Rio and for many other people, probably Massimiliano is also a positive in, the, in this team. It's only. Uh, Whenever you have a correlation, two systems that correlate the states and so on, you can uh, adopt this uh, information approach. 
you can interpret the system as a master cognition. Uh, I have my doubts about that. I think you need the the, the key point is this is this separation separation of time scales, uh, which is in DNA in the uh, in the in the in memories, etc. Probably the the these two viewpoints are related also with uh, the fact with a distinction in information which is which is a, 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 the distinction between digital and, and analog information and this is more related with digital information when you have really the states which are discrete and you cannot jump between one and two or, or uh, and and this is more this can be in continuous time or discrete time and 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 then the information involved in this type of view point is more uh, analog information and one problem that I, i've not seen this is a mathematical philosophical problem what are what are the, the advantages or disadvantages of, of analog information versus versus digital information this is something that um well, Charles Bennett says that uh, 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 in digital information you can have error correction, and in, in analog information you can. Hmm. So, for instance, I don't know if somebody has thought of a life. If life would be possible with continuous, with analog information, life uses digital information. So DNA, is digital. Uh, other information in biology is is analog, uh, but uh, DNA is digital, and uh, it is not so clear if. Uh, for me, it's not clear. You can you can have a evolution with analog information. That was my point. I mean, uh, I, I started learning this thing, and my always my question was, uh, why do don't we do things in continuous time or continuous uh, variables? No, but when I worked at the lab, I thought, okay, you can only measure with a thin precision. <laughs> And only in a finite rate of uh, acquisition rate, no. So maybe thinking that a continuous uh, variable or time, maybe like an idealization, no. And I like um, I think that is not uh, physically realizable. Maybe no. No, you can. Uh, the, 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 the binary, as you say, the binary, this, this, this. Yeah, I know, I know. But when you measure, you record in a very reliable way. You record. Information. Oh, yeah. Now and now they sell more prices than CDs. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, but you, you can. Uh, whenever you have a mode, you can even say or whatever. It's mostly not mode. 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 that you can create many of them. Mode. Uh, so you are transmitting analog information. With the mode. So, um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, but, uh, well, I don't have the answer. I mean, when you are measuring, I mean, when you are measuring something, you can only measure with a finite precision. Yeah, yeah, of course. And also in a finite um, number of instances, you can measure at every. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I know. You want, so. Well, for for the mode, you also need. Uh, 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 you also need a large separation of time. I mean, you need something with a long lifetime, yeah. right? because uh, otherwise, long. Long. Yeah, long, long with respect to the scale where you are using the device. So, uh, when do you need uh, that something? How, how long do you need to be reliable in memory? Well, okay. oh, well the. the you decide centuries, but uh, at least the time of uh, where you are manipulating this information. Maybe typical, typical realization times, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah but uh, no, but he's asking large. when I say long lifetime, yeah. is how long? Uh, and you just your memory. In, in technology is clear, the longer the better. The, be the longer the better. In, in biology, I think you see in the, in the time scale where the process is going on. But also, I, I, well, this do, is. Do you can multiply 
example, of 200 times, multiply uh, the time of the process you want to measure, so you can yeah. do it, then you consider it wrong. Yeah. Because, for example, the time scales of uh, tracking the process uh, in biology is much larger than yeah. in biology. Yeah. You know. It's always so a comparison. The geological it's a comparison time. between time scale. When I say long yeah. lifetime, it's a comparison with the time scale where with respect to process. process. With respect to process. With yeah. respect to the process you are going on. For instance, in this in this case that we are uh, it would be in the in the there is a time scale where you manipulate all these things. So mm -hmm. uh, Yes. The the states of the memory must must be uh, much longer than this scale of time. Mm -hmm. And this, for instance, look at this. This is a, what we call an information reservoir or, or or fuel. But if you wait, if this is a memory, magnetic memory, and you wait or you heat it up or you wait for uh, century, one century, this will disorder by itself. This is an irreversible process, actually. When the when the memory because you are disordering something and you are not getting all the work that you could get if you do the process. Depends on. Yeah. Okay, so this is a. Uh, I I wanted to finish with this, but uh, I think it was so uh, in. In the last 10 minutes, I want to finish with something else. But this is the main, I wanted to finish with this, with uh, this philosophical question. But uh, um, so, well, you can, I, I think they are complementary. So this can be useful. And this, I think the, the, for the fundamental role of information in physics, you need this. And, uh, and maybe to apply to biological systems or other systems, this is enough. Okay. So I let you choose team, and uh, and and I will finish the course with uh, some tool uh, for those who like this one. Well, I like this one, but, uh, but um, uh, how can you use these ideas? to apply for, and uh, 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 how can they be applied to biological systems? But it's, it's, I will not, today's session is not very, I, I, I don't want to give you so much details. This is something that I will do in the, in the, in the whiteboard. Well, it's here, but let me, oops. Mm -hmm. It is uh, summarized in this, in this slide. Uh, the theory that I want to just uh, briefly uh, show you is, is done by Jordan Horowitz and Massimiliano Esposito in this paper in 2014. And they introduced the concept, well, the, the, the concept of information flows was introduced by uh, our, uh, our Dayan, right? well, uh, an Armenian physicist. I cannot say yes. but, um, and it was uh, this um, Armen, Armen Alaverdian and Gunter Mahler, and they introduced it much in 2009. But actually, this paper is uh, this is more well, this is mm, there are more results in this paper. So, and the, the idea is to use
The idea is to repeat this scheme. The idea is to repeat this scheme, but in continuous time. So can you do something? For instance, suppose that now instead of a system and an observer and, and, uh, and do all these procedures, measurement, feedback, eraser, um, you do everything in continuous time and X and M are two stochastic processes. So you have two stochastic processes and which form a single stochastic process when you consider the two together. And, and there will be uh, a mutual information that can grow and can decrease and so on. So essentially, if you look at this, it's a bit like that. So you have two stochastic processes that they evolve, they create correlations, they destroy correlations. And the idea is to uh, uh, do this in continuous time. So, um, I would be very, um, yeah, I, I, I will not mention very much in details, but this is the minimum idea. I would write. Okay, uh, look at um, the, 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 the definition of, uh, of uh, the mutual information. Remember that we have different definitions, but one that uh, uh, is especially interesting is this one. Or correlations. Now, now we are trying to follow this idea that uh, information, that uh, mutual information is a uh, is a measure of correlations, and and and, and this is the best uh, way of expressing this. And if the correlation, this is remember, this is this is the number of bits I need to describe x. This is the number of bits I need to describe y. And this is the number of bits that I need to describe the two together. So the mutual information is the number of bits I save if I describe the two separate 
with respect to describing the two together. Okay. And from that, I can get that H So uh, the entropy, the, the, the mutual information you see, now, now look at this, this is Sharon entropy, but you can think of, of thermodynamic entropy as well. So what is the entropy? Is the, the, when, when two systems are correlated, entropy is sub additive. The entropy of the, of the of thing is less than the sum. And this less, this uh, is, 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 is just the mutual information. So this is why it's the, the correlations Reduce the entropy and increase the free energy. Because the free energy is always mine. So um, now suppose that I have two stochastic processes. Mm -hmm. So now X, X and I depend on Chile. Yeah. Sorry, Professor, there is just one more question. Mm -hmm. Is the minimum cost of gaining one bit of information to measurement still? K2 LN2. Uh, K2. Well, this depends very much on the. Actually, uh, depends on the memory. It is in the formulas that I showed before. It's not K3 log 2 necessary. It depends on the memory and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, not necessarily. You can look at what we. Yes. Did tomorrow, yesterday, or today. Okay. Please okay, continue. So, um, Continue. Now, suppose you have two stochastic processes, and well, let's multiply. If we multiply by k, this we can we can uh, so we multiply by k here, the Bormann constant, and this would be this would be the entropy, the physical entropy. So now you can write. Um, this as a function of time. Yeah, this temperature, no, sorry, temperature, no. Okay. Well, Boltzmann constant is equal to one, so we can. So we have this formula, which is the entropy, uh, how the entropy of the system evolves. And now we can take the derivative, the time derivative of this. And the time derivative, well, it's just that. And, uh, and here, uh, this is a very simple formula. It's just the term derivative of this. It tells you how, if you have two systems evolving in time, how the entropy of the, this is the real entropy, the entropy of the universe, how, how it changes. So it changes according to the, each, the contribution of each system plus the contribution of the population. And uh, you can convert this into, into free energy, if you like. The, the, the work, The work is always bigger than the free than the derivative of the free energy, and the derivative of the free energy would be uh, um, the f. It, it would be like that. It would be the uh, the energy of x minus um, sorry the energy of x y. Or the total energy with derivative, no? with the derivative minus s time this entropy, so time s x minus time s y plus time, sorry, time temperature. Okay, and if I if I have here. The, the energy of X, the energy of Y and the interaction energy, I can write this as uh, 
the work is, is bigger than this uh, this energy in this entropy is, is the free energy of x this is the free energy of y and now i have the correlations and the the the, the uh, This, this formula contains all the scheme that I, it was in my slide, contains everything. So for instance, suppose that the, what is the work to measure? Okay, in the work to measure, I integrate this over a measurement. In the measurement, this, I have the, inter, the this integral is zero because at the beginning and at the end of is zero. This is zero because the system doesn't change. So I get just, yes, the change of free energy in the in the observer plus the create the, the increment of of, of, uh, of correlation. In, for the feedback, I can do the same. This equation contains all the equations that we have uh, before, and and the moreover, this can be applied to uh, continuous time. So if I if I have two systems and they evolve, I can. I can just uh, apply this formula to any interval of time. And this is the idea of information flows. Information flows, they compute the, the uh, you can take two stochastic processes as you like and compute this uh, and, and, and calculate the minimal work to evolve in this way. So, um, so you see that uh, one can, uh, these two equations are equivalent, so one can just work with the entropies instead of the, of the free energy. And this is what Horowitz uh, and, and Esposito do in, the, in, the, um, in this paper. Okay, but there is a last thing, uh, which is the following. So uh, you can, um, uh, you can now go to the to this formula, the, the entropy production. So, sorry, the entropy here, and, and you can calculate the entropy production. So the, the the entropy change in the universe. This is what we call the entropy production. When you have a system in contact with thermal path and so on, the entropy of the universe changes as follows. It, it is the entropy of the system, which is in this case SXT, SYT, plus the change of entropy in the reservoirs. This is essentially Q divided by T. If you have many reservoirs, this is uh, how much work goes to the system, how much, how much heat goes to the reservoir, okay? And um, and this is bigger than zero by the second law, this is the second law. And here you can replace, in here you can replace this one and you can do a lot of things. You can do uh, uh, when, when uh, so the important thing here is the sign of the of the object. So the information is is minus, uh, and this is uh, this is uh, a plus. Uh, so you you want to beat the second law. So you want to to reduce as much as possible. For instance, if you want to pump heat or you want a motor, you want this to be negative. Of course, this cannot be negative because of this. Uh, but uh, thanks to yeah, if if I if, if I have if I have a photo information, if I get this negative, so if I reduce the correlations, I can increase. I can do this negative as well. Okay. If I increase the correlations, this is positive, and then this is a minus, then I need resources from the environment. So when I measure, I increase the correlations. I need 
resources for the environment. When I exploit the correlations, I can uh, I can make this negative. I can extract heat from the reservoir. Okay, uh, uh, this is just um, um, a very brief idea of what they do in the paper. The, uh, this is the first thing to use this equation and this one to analyze the energetics of systems. Now we don't need the separation of time spirit. We don't need anything. This is why uh, it's just how the mutual information and, and the entropy of the reservoir can be, you can use one resource. This is, what, this is a resource, this is heat and so on, so you can extract. And this is uh, another resource. So it is an exchange between one of them. And just the last thing, I, I will show you this in a, in a, in a slide. What they do is this in Markov chains. And um, in, uh, they want to calculate this. They want to use this, uh, this formula that the total pro entry production is Sx plus Si plus, uh, sorry, minus I plus the entropy in the reservoirs. And this is bigger than zero. Uh, this is okay if you apply to the Maxwell Demon and things like that. The problem is when you want to apply this in biology to uh, autonomous systems where there is no reinforcement and the system gets uh, reaches a stationary state. When the station when when the state is stationary, everything is zero here. You know that the stationary means that everything is zero. This is not zero because you can have also but this is zero. So they managed to overcome this by defi defining information flows in a stationary state. This is a bit technical, but I want just to mention to you. But you realize that there are different tools. And this is a very important tool for those who are working with biological systems in stationary states. This is a good reference. And the idea is that the mutual, inf the, the mutual information is zero. But you can split it in two terms, one positive, one negative, which is uh, the flow of, of, of uh, information that goes from system one to system two, from system X to system Y. If somebody is interested, I can uh, explain details in this at some, at some point. And uh, what it is more interesting, they can derive two second laws for, um, for system X and system Y. So even though this is, a, you have a motor, for instance, or something like that, if you interpret the motor as, as following these lines, you can uh, split the, the, the operation of the motor into a part, which is creating correlations, which can be interpreted as a measurement, even in continuous time, and some part, which is exploiting correlations, which can be considered as can be interpreted as and, and moreover, you can calculate the efficiency of each of these two processes. So in a machine that can be interpreted like that, and any machine can be interpreted like that, you can really um, uh, uh, look at, I mean, uh, assess the efficiency of each process separately. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry that I cannot enter into detail because this is a, we need it, we need uh, two hours and so, but it is, uh, the, the main idea is this, okay? So I go back to, you see that this is, this is really, you, this uh, theory by Korovitz and Esposito is only based on this part. So 
So I'll leave you with this question and uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor. Are there any questions from the audience? And, uh, let's, yes, let's check. Well, I will be here uh, right. tomorrow, and so somebody wants to. Uh, I have a question about this. Like, uh, about, uh, what do you think are the main challenges in the team? Like, well, this is for the round table. But, uh, okay. <laughs> Okay. In this field, in, in information, uh, for me, the main is to exploit this part to see how, how information devices appear in nature, for instance. So this is a very important question. But, uh, how uh, we are building, as I mean, we humans are building information devices every, every day and uh, increasing the and, 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 and building an information device is, is, is not trivial. You, you are building a physical system that has the symmetry breaking or the ergodicity breaking and long life plans and so on. So uh, this is for me an interesting question, what this means for the physical context. And uh, in biology, yeah, in biology, I didn't talk about, there are many people working on information theory applied to biology, sensing, and the immune system. You work for endosomes, no? and, uh, which is a kind of uh, uh, information processing from the membrane to the nucleus in the cell. Of course, you have DNA splicing, DNA from RNA, all these parts. And people is interested, no, maybe not so much in the thermodynamics, but applying information theory. Mm -hmm. And of course, then you have quantum, thermal, quantum information. And it's also uh, what about information generated by black holes? Are Ooh. these results applicable to yeah, cosmological yeah. models? I would like to know about that. I never understood the black holes. You know, you know. We saw we saw this paper like very. And I don't understand this. Uh, I know that the entropy of a black hole is pretty with the. The surface, no, and so on the horizon, surface of the horizon. But uh, I don't, I don't know. I'm more interested in in cosmolo cosmological problems. Yeah, I'm interested because uh, uh, here you see that it is ergodicity breaking. Ergodicity breaking means when you when you have this long life time states, it's because you do break ergodicity in the system. You know? The system cannot explore in the two world. The system cannot explore the whole. Uh, Mm -hmm. And ergodicity and breaking occurs in many important stages of, of in cosmology, like nucleogenesis. Mm -hmm. When you have a nucleogenesis, you have a symmetry break. Mm -hmm. Or when you create a planet, when there is a gravitational collapse, you, the planet could be here or here or here. So there is a symmetry breaking as well. So there. Mm -hmm. So uh, and and all these ideas of the entropy of the universe increasing and so on. It's based on the fact that the, the, the system is ergodic, which is, I, I think is, is, is completely nonsense. The system is not ergodic. Last question. Yes, of course. One last question from the chat. Okay, so what do you mean by the relation between information and a large time scales? Okay. Not necessarily, of, of course, this is also very interesting information in complex systems. No, but uh, uh, um, it's just uh, uh, this thing that we mentioned before is uh, uh, large time means that in a hard drive that you need that the zeros and ones uh, don't flip uh, spontaneously because you need a long lifetime. And, uh, and DNA, you, you don't like to have mutations every spontaneous day, mutations. <laughs> every time your cells divide so you need reliability and reliability means long uh, states that long that last for for a long time right. okay so let's thank professor once again before we proceed further i believe okay, the government has some announcements yeah 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 i would like to also to Personally, thanks Juan for coming uh, 